Today I'm rating every single map inside of Yeep's Hide and Seek. And I'm going to determine their rating based on what I like about the map and what I don't like about the map. So anyways, let's just get started. The first map is Starter House. Starter House is the first actual map you load into after completing the tutorial. It's a fairly simple map to get around, especially if you're new to the game. What I like about the map is that it's fairly simple to get around, especially if you're a new player. And what I don't like about it is how many new players there are. That by itself isn't really a problem, it just makes it really hard to actually play hide and seek in this map. But overall, I'm gonna rate Starter House a 7 out of 10. The next map I'm gonna rate is Blue House. What I like about Blue House is that it's very easy to hide yourself inside of, which can help you win almost every single round. What I don't like is how small the map feels. Even though it's the same size as every other map, it just feels really small because it's all just one building. Overall, I'm gonna have to rate Blue House a 5 out of 10, I just don't like it that much. Next up is the basement map. Now I really like the basement map, and it's probably one of my favorites. But what I like most is how it looks like the back rooms. Which I don't know if that's intentional or not, but I mean... Uh, just look at it, I almost mistaked this for the back rooms when I first saw it. What I don't like about the basement map is that people usually just spam a bunch of hider detectors, which makes it really hard to switch hiding spots mid-round. But overall, I'm gonna have to give Basement an 8 out of 10. The fourth map I'm gonna rate is the Fortress. Now, I don't like any of the ice maps that much, but what I do like about the Fortress is that underneath it is a giant ice cave. Which I just think it looks really cool. There's some pictures of it on screen right now, and I mean, you can't tell me that doesn't look cool. What I don't like about the map is that usually when people come to it, they just want to buy the grapplers and not actually play the game. Which I understand, since most of the winter maps aren't that exciting, but, I mean, at that point just go to a private lobby and do it. Overall, I rate the Fortress map a 4 out of 10. Now, I'm just gonna be honest, I hate Outpost. It's just kind of a boring map, and I feel like if you could actually play Hide and Seek in it, it would be a lot more fun. Which I understand that a game like this will need a map where you can just chill, considering a lot of people don't actually play the game for Hide and Seek itself. But I feel like this map has a lot of missed potential. If I had to say something good about the map, it would probably be the mountain. I just think it looks really cool. But other than that, I'm gonna have to rate Outpost a 3 out of 10. Next up, we have the map that you probably clicked on this video for. And that map is, of course, the playground. What I like about the playground map is its new ocean revamp. I honestly think it looks better than the original version. What I don't like about the map is how hard it is to get into a lobby with your friends. Considering how it's probably the most popular map, most of the servers are going to be full, which can make it really hard to join your friends in a public lobby. But other than that, I'm going to rate the playground a 10 out of 10. Next up, we have the island map. The best part about the island map is probably the hidden cave that gives you two secret cosmetics. Those being the duck and the sword. The duck is basically just a reskin of this floaty, and the sword is a reskin of this bat. This map has the same issue as Playground, and that's where it feels way too small. Overall, I'm gonna have to rate the island map a 5 out of 10. Next up, we have Spleef. Spleef is one of my favorite maps, and it's kind of just because it's fun. What I don't like about Spleef is its players. Most of the time, you're gonna get targeted unless you actually have good items. So if you haven't played the game for at least a month and you don't have a bat and a few of the bombs, then it's going to be really hard to play Spleef. But overall, I rate Spleef a 9 out of 10. The second to last map is going to be Boat Battle. If you somehow haven't seen the Ocean Update yet, even though it's been out for half a month, Boat Battle is basically just where you blow each other's boats up. It's really fun and it can lead to some hilarious situations. What I don't like about Boat Battle is how hard it was to find the final button stash. This button stash is inside of the skull that's underneath the water. But you might think that's pretty easy to see, but it's literally right underneath this deck, which causes it to be pitch black in there. Overall, I rate Boat Battle a 10 out of 10. Finally, we have the most recent map added to the game. And that map is of course the water park. Now I really like the water park. My favorite part about the water park is in this little strip of water right here. If you go to the right as soon as you enter the map, you'll see a hole inside of this strip of water. And that hole will lead you into an underwater cave, which looks amazing. What I don't like about this map is how 
uh, when it first came out, I was kind of blind. And what I mean by that is that I didn't see the starting section for the race. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I didn't see the starting section for the race that's right behind me. I walked past it so many times and I was trying to find it for like 30 minutes. When I finally rubbed my two brain cells together, I finally saw it. And then I proceeded to get a score of 30 on the race, which that, that's terrible if you didn't know. But overall, I'm gonna rate Water Park an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video. If you find it entertaining, then you should subscribe. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.